Hello, this is Haka the Bean, and today, I'm surprised that I'm actually only saying this today instead of at least a year ago. Today, we are reading SCP-217, also known as the Clockwork Virus. And I looked through my videos. I have not made a video on this, apparently. Or not one that I can find. So here I am to make that video now. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. Item number SCP-217 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures Containment areas we kept behind two reverse pressure airlocks. Chemical shower sterilization, full contained atmosphere, hazmat suits, and 24-hour post-interaction quarantine. And testing is mandatory for all personnel entering containment area. Should containment be breached, the blast door for the containment and research area will seal. And chemical agent ZEER-21711 will be pumped into the air. Any humans exposed to SCP-217 are to be contained and held for observation. Any items touched by those affected by SCP-217 must be sterilized. Description SCP-217 is a virus, incurable by current memes, with a rate of infectivity at 100%. It affects all organisms in the kingdom Animalia and can be spread via touch or contact with bodily fluid. SCP-217 is very hardy and can survive for years outside the host body. The progress of the infection is very slow, with some subjects going several years before manifesting any new symptoms. SCP-217 alters the biochemistry of organic tissue causing organic matter to rearrange into a form of organic metal. The processes involved with this change are not yet fully understood, but the advanced stages are well documented. A subject will begin to turn into a complex arrangement of gears and clockwork, these taking over the former biological functions. Advanced stage infection is reported to be very painful, but earlier stages are oftentimes unnoticed, with only vague Feelings of confusion, insomnia, and joint stiffness. Hearts are replaced by gears and small tubes, joints by gear networks, eyes by structures not unlike primitive hand crank film cameras, etc. SCP-217 shows first on the outside of the body in all creatures except mammals. In mammals, it first converts the internal structure before manifesting outside the body. This can cause those infected to go for very long periods of time without knowing of infection. SCP-217 has been, even been shown to totally convert the inside of the body before showing any external or visible symptoms. SCP-217 has infected several major metropolitan areas in the past, most notably redacted. The mental state of those those in middle to advanced stages of infection has been shown to be much diminished. Subjects respond in a repetitive uh, fashion, are very dull and mechanical in actions, are easily distracted and confused, and appear generally irritable when faced with new problems. In addition, research on a fully converted brain has data expunged. I can only imagine why. Document number 217-6 Notes on Symptoms Subjects infected by SCP-217 have at early stages reported no major symptoms aside from increased lethargy and general lack of emotional response. Some have reported a feeling of fluttering or moving under the skin, coupled with a persistent ticking noise. This noise seems most prominent when SCP-217 infects the shoulders, neck, and head. 
However, it is un inaudible if recording equipment is pressed against an affected area. Initial affection of SCP-217, as has already been stated, is almost undetectable, as the infection and advances, subjects will begin to feel sharp, tearing pain in areas that are being converted. It has been compared to a knife wound or deep muscle tear, and can persist for hours or several days depending on both the subject and the area affected. The new clockwork organs appear to rip and tear a tissue for a short time before becoming fully integrated and settling into the surrounding tissue. This is believed to account for the pain. Areas infected appear to be metal, mainly brass, steel, and iron. The iron I get because we have that in our we literally have that in our blood. Other substances have been reported appearing to be leather, rubber, glass, wood, wood, and other basic materials. Despite appearances, it is purely organic materials and even carries the subject's DNA. Organs and tissues affected appear more resilient than normal, carrying the same strength and density as the materials they resemble, instead of normal tissue density. Areas that are damaged repair over time, but it is much slower than standard human regeneration. Damaged areas can instant be instantly repaired by replacing damaged areas with new parts of the same type. Testing has shown that there are no ill effects if parts from normal materials, steel, wood, leather, replace the existing biomechanical clockworks. Most alarmingly, the people with, infected with SCP-217 can continue for months, even years without being detected. With infections so easy to spread, hundreds could be infected and before proper containment could be enforced. Infection appears to spread most quickly in large offices, malls, and other large concentrations of people. Now, anything or anyone suspected or confirmed to be infected with SCP-217 is not to be allowed near SCP-882. Addendum. At this time, cross-experimentation between SCP-229 and SCP-217 is allowed only with O5 approval. So that was SCP-217. The Clockwork Virus. An infection that is honestly a little bit horrifying if you really think of it. Anyway, if you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. So until then, goodbye!